Hello everybody, John Finn here, SupernaturalHouseChurch.org with another installment of the discipleship uh, process and talking about walking with the Father. Today I want to share with you something that the Father spoke to me and actually something he said to a deaf mute man that I know. And uh, this happened some time ago when I was the executive director of a Bible school in Tulsa in part of a megachurch. And I got to know this deaf mute man who was in his early 40s. And uh, the reason for that is this man loved the Lord. Um, this is going to give you a, a neat perspective on the Father God. This man loved the Lord, but he was always down front for every single altar call. And, uh, you know, it didn't matter. He, he was deaf mute. He didn't know American Sign Language. So communicating was very hard, but he, but he was there for every service. So every single altar call, he was down front. You know, and, and so the pastor would say, okay, anybody who needs deliverance from drugs or anything, and down he would come. And I think the icing on the cake, I think the straw that broke the camel's back uh, was when the pastor's wife was having an altar call for women who were having difficulty conceiving. And so she said, for all the ladies, difficulty conceiving, you want prayer, come down front. And here comes this deaf mute man down front. And that's when the pastor said, John, you know him. You've gotten to, to know him a little bit. Would you talk to him and let him know that he doesn't have to come down front for every single altar call? So I think I'd gotten to know him because he saw me wheel our son when we would come to church. Uh, our son, Chris, is handicapped, our oldest son. And we'd wheel him in and out uh, uh, during the services, and I think there was some sort of a commonality he felt. But and of course, being in my position, I always sat in the front row or the, the second row or something like that. So this deaf mute man would would search me out, or we'd at least wave to each other or something like that. And that's the whole extent that I knew him. I knew his first name, and that was it. That's all I knew. So I was not successful in communicating to him that he doesn't have to come down front for every single altar call. And so it was this one Sunday evening, uh, Sunday night service. Uh, at the end of the service, the pastor was once again having an altar call. And this time it was for people who need deliverance from addiction, from drugs, gambling, whatever the case may be. Six men came down front, plus this deaf mute man. And, of course, the six men, you know, having their backs to the congregation, you could see that their heads were bowed, their hands were, were, were clasped in front of them, very quiet. The pastor was looking into the congregation, waiting for any more who wanted to come. And here comes the deaf mute man, and he's right in the middle. He's got three men on the left side, three men on the right side. And while those six men have their heads down and their cl hands clasped in front of him, this man has his hands up, his head thrown back, and he's twisting at the waist. Now, you've got to understand, I'm in the congregation, so I can see him, and I can see his face. He's twisting so much, and he's got this big old grin on his face. He's just over, he's just spilling over with joy and happiness. And I look at him, and I, I, he, you know, my attention was drawn, and I look there, and I say, and, and, and I said, and I, I thought, okay, why is that? And as soon as I said, why is that? Immediately, my eyes were open to the spirit room, and I saw the shaft of light coming down on him. And it was, it was, it was, a, it was full of light. It wasn't like a hollow tube. It was full of light all the way. It was just encompassing him. And that was the source of his joy. He was just twisting and smiling. And I thought, how ironic. He's, he's mute. He can't talk. He's have experienced all this joy and he can't tell anybody about it. In an otherwise very solemn moment in the church service. And, and not only that, but I started seeing words coming down into that light. I mean, just like printed out words coming down. And I heard the father at the same time talk to him. And this is what the father said. He said, my son, I appreciate your hard work. I appreciate your hard work. And he said, and I want you to know that in the ages to come, I've given you a throne and great authority. And many will come and sit at your feet and learn of you. And I, I just, I was astounded. Many will, I've given you a throne and great authority in the ages to come and many will come and sit at your feet. And I was like, no wonder he's overjoyed, but he can't share it with anybody. I thought, how ironic, what a divine sense of humor, so to speak. And, and I was amazed. And I looked at that and I said, Father, why him? And just like that, the father said, I enjoy his worship. And I said, Father, I said, think of all he's missing in life. He's, he's probably on welfare or some unearned income. And, and he, he doesn't have a wife, I'm sure, and kids think he could have a home and career and cars and boats and travel and see the world. He could experience so much if you would heal him. And just like that, he said, he finds his fulfillment in me. And I said, Father, I said, think about it. There's probably 1,500 or 1,800 people here tonight at this Sunday night service. I said, think about what it would be for a deaf mute man to be healed. What, I mean, what, it would just spread throughout the, the congregation, throughout the community. It would be an amazing, amazing thing to, to have this deaf mute man healed in our midst. And he said this, he said, 
They have the scripture that tells them what true religion is, yet no one greets him when he comes in, nor says goodbye to him when he leaves. Therefore, they will come and sit at his feet and learn of him. And, oh, Father, I said, I understand, I, I think, but, you know, there's 1,500, 1,800 people here. Think about if you healed him. Why don't you heal him? Because, I mean, in Tulsa, the buckle of the Bible belt, you know, the, the local news stations would pick it up. His case is well documented, I'm sure. What It would mean so much. Why don't you heal him? And this one last thing he said. He said, he has done more with the little he's been given in this life than most all those around you tonight that you would call whole. Therefore, they will come and sit at his feet and learn of him. And that was the end of that conversation. So I want you to think about that, the, the elements of it. You know, when, when he was being blessed in such a way, and the Father telling him, of, in the ages to come, I've given you a throne and great authority. And I said, why? Why are you blessed? He said, I enjoy his worship. You see, in John 4, 24, Jesus said, God the Father is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Truth means that you don't have any ulterior motives. There's no strings attached. You are just loving God to love God. And I might point out that the Greek word worship is pros kuneo. Pros, P-R-O-S, means, to, means towards, and kuneo, K-U-N-E-O, means to kiss. So the word worship that Jesus used in John 4, 24 is to kiss towards the Father. And he's seeking such to worship him, to kiss towards. He's looking for that affection in spirit and in truth. In truth refers to no ulterior motives. Uh, that that you, you're not trying to make, ma manipulate him. Like, oh, Lord, I'm singing this to you, but remember, I've got this bill due on Friday, and I really need it paid. So this is kind of worship. It's kind of a reminder. No, no, no. You're not getting anywhere. That, that stays on earth. You're not getting anywhere with him. But what this deaf mute friend did was he worshiped purely of his spirit. And I know that most people don't know how to worship. Because the, the truth is that, you know, we have a network of house churches in, in dozens of nations around the world. And I go to many of these house church meetings. And in our own house church conventions, our meetings, our, our conferences, I wouldn't call them conventions, our, our retreats. And, and oftentimes I'll, I'll have the, the musician, the guitar player, whatever. I say, okay, let's just stay before the Lord. Let's just worship him. Just pour out of your spirit. Let's worship. And I'll tell you what, as soon as the music stops, there's silence. And I know that Christians as a whole don't know how to worship. They may know how to accompany a band. They may know how to accompany a CD or some other thing. But you stop the music and the worship stops. Folks, it should be that worship flows out of us, out of our innermost being. And I'll tell people, I'll say, get in touch. I said, what this man could do is he was in touch with why he was glad he was saved, why he was born again. He was glad and appreciative and thankful to the Father, and he was in touch enough with himself. And I'm amazed at Christians who will have no problem getting in touch with their feelings and give their dog, you know, nose-to-nose -nose kisses and tell them about what a wonderful little pet they are or their cat and they'll nuzzle up against it and, and tell them how much they love them and everything yet you stop the music in a small group or a church service and they're and, and i say okay let's worship the lord let's worship the father and they're just sitting there going uh, like that it's like really folks this is this is a this uh, what i'm sharing here today what the deaf man heard i hope you understand that it's an ambiguous title because what the deaf man heard is not just what the deaf mute here heard, but what you and I are hearing. What I heard that particular evening was it brought me back to the, to the four main points. Pure worship. That get in touch and just express the love. So that you don't need music, you don't need a CD, you don't need a guitar. Praise God for all of that. But the musician should accompany the worship that flows out of our heart, not us accompanying the musicians. And the auditorium congregational setting has it all backwards. But the purity of the worship, the fact that he finds his fulfillment in the Father, that the things of this world mean next to nothing compared to the joy of knowing God, and the fact that the Father is promising him, in the ages to come, I've given you a throne and great authority, and many will come and sit at your feet and learn of you. The fact that our eyes are both here present, but also knowing that we do have a future. And then the third point that he said to me, he says, they know the scripture, what to do, yet no one greets him when he comes in or says goodbye to him when he leaves. Do you have somebody who's handicapped, who's infirmed, who's sick among you? Do you pay them uh, um, any mind? Do you, do you pay attention to them? Do you, if you're on an airplane and a baby's crying, do you, are you in derision and irritated because, because the, the idea of a child or you take, see somebody handicapped out there, why would they bring children to a restaurant or a handicapped person to a restaurant? Or do you, are you humble and say, wow, that's, that's still one of God's creations right there. And, and they have a future in heaven. And then the fourth point is uh, that he has done more with the little he's been given in this life than most all those around you tonight you would call whole. I thought that was an interesting statement. 
he has done more with the little he's been given in this life than most all those around you that we, you would call whole. Two months later, I w went to a little taco restaurant and I walked through the door and there was this deaf mute cleaning the lobby. I had gone just a little bit after the, uh, the lunch hour and this deaf mute was cleaning and everything. And he was motioning and everything and he, he was trying to tell me something but I didn't know what it was and his manager came out. I told him I knew, her, knew him from church. And she communicated a little bit with him. She said, oh, he's trying to show you his hard work, that we had a shipment today. And he broke down all the boxes and put them out by the recycling, by the, by the bin. And he just wanted you to show you uh, how the back end is cleaned up and how he cleaned it up. And I remember the father's words from two months earlier, my son, I appreciate your hard work. Here he was, a lowly hourly employee cleaning a fast food restaurant from the quote unquote normal people's trash that left, were left behind. And yet the father sees it. So I just want to leave you with this, perhaps reflection, perhaps introspection, but just be blessed. What the deaf man heard, not only what he heard that day, but what I heard, and hopefully maybe what you're hearing now, maybe it'll have an impact on you. All right, God bless. Talk to you next week.